So you have been thinking about selling your home during the winter, but winter in Wisconsin is kind of a long deal and on top of that there's the holidays with Thanksgiving and Christmas that gets everybody distracted. And you remember that traditional wisdom is telling you to not sell your house during the winter and wait until spring. At least that is what Uncle Mike said. So what is it really like to sell a house during the winter? Is it really a bad idea? Let's take a look at some data. So when it comes to selling a house in the middle of the winter, let's talk about the seller's perspective first. It is a very common misconception that buyers are planning the move around the school year. This is true in some cases, but when you look at the data, you can see that more than half of all buyers don't even have kids in the school age, so it's a completely non-issue for them. For the other half, many of them are relocating locally and the kids can even stay in the same school district or just have a short commute for the remaining months of the year. So it is true for some buyers, but for the vast majority of buyers, school year is not really that big of a factor. Another major concern that sellers have is that the house will obviously not show as nicely during the winter months as it would in spring and summer when everything is green and in full blossom. This is where the pride of ownership comes through and of course every seller wants to look their house the very best when they're putting it on the market and presenting it to buyers. But keep in mind that buyers are comparing one house during the winter versus another house in the winter. They're not comparing your house during the winter with your house during spring or another house during spring. Buyers are fully aware that the landscaping will look much nicer during spring and it is usually not even a talking point for them. So here's the interesting part. When you look at the data, you can see that sales in Wisconsin during the winter month are down about 23%, which is actually not that bad. But it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because sellers are thinking that winter is a bad time to put their home on the market and they'd rather wait for spring, every year in fall, we're seeing a decreasing number of new listings hit the marketplace. From a buyer point of view, that means when they're looking at the inventory, there are fewer choices and most of it is leftover inventory from last summer, which is either overpriced or just in poor condition and not attractive. So in a way, the lack of attractive inventory in many cases is also contributing to the 23% reduction in sales that we're seeing during the winter month. But there is another issue that makes matters even worse, or should I say inventory even lower. So inventory is already in slow decline over the fall months and whatever inventory is left oftentimes has a listing contract that is set to expire by December 31st. So by the end of December, a lot of the remaining inventory is going to disappear as well. Of course, the sellers that have not been able to successfully sell their home now feel confirmed in the notion that winter is a bad time to sell a home anyways and they're usually going to take a break and are not going to relist until later in spring. So from an inventory point of view, the inventory is already low by December and it's taking another sharp hit by the end of December. And if you look on the internet on January 1st, there is barely anything left. Keep that thought in mind because I'm gonna get back to that in just a minute. So this was the seller's perspective. Now let's take a look at buyer behavior. Throughout fall, buyers and sellers are somewhat on the same page. There is no major disconnect there. As we're entering the holiday season, beginning with Thanksgiving, on both sides we are seeing activity levels slowly decline. Everybody is busy and distracted with the holidays. The major disconnect is happening on January 1st. Remember how I was explaining before how inventory is taking a sharp decline by the end of December? Now, the irony is that buyer activity is jumping up on January 1st significantly. The reason I believe why this is happening is because the holidays are always sparking discussions around homes. At Thanksgiving, you find out that your uh, dining room table is not big enough and at Christmas, there is conversations about a new home, but everybody is putting it off until the next year. So then you have New Year's Eve and everybody's waking up on January 1st, they find out it's the new year. So everybody and their brother on the computer looking on the internet for inventory and you guessed it, there is almost nothing there. So this is the big gap that's opening up, that's the big cultural misunderstanding between buyers and sellers where they're totally not on the same page. It's almost ironic every year in January and February, I have conversations with my buyers that say there's no inventory, there's nothing on the market, we really need to buy a house now and we can't find anything. 
and two hours later I have a conversation with the potential seller and they're telling me oh, it's not a good time right now we'd rather wait until spring so that gap is slowly closing as we're progressing through January and February and then into March there's more and more inventory available which means from a buyer's perspective there's going to be more choices from a seller's perspective that means there's going to be more competition I guess this is really one of the things where the internet has profoundly changed the way how we're doing things in our lives. It's very conceivable to me that before the internet it was indeed a little bit more difficult to sell a house during the middle of the winter. Even 10 years ago when you were looking online and all you could see was maybe a dozen low resolution pictures, you still had to go out and physically look at the property. But today every good listing has at least 50 high definition pictures so it's very easy to shop for listings from the convenience of your living room. So the internet has changed how we're doing things. Not only we're shopping on Amazon, but also the way how we're shopping for houses. So in summary, if you're considering selling your home and you have an open-ended timeline and nothing is rushing you, you can certainly wait until spring and list your home during traditional home selling months. But on the other hand, there is nothing wrong with listing your home during the winter. In fact, there's some key advantages to that. First of all, inventory is usually a lot lower. And less inventory means less competition for you as a seller. In fact, the inventory that is out there is typically very picked over, so you get a lot of attention as a new and attractive listing from the buyers. Secondly, the buyers that are out there and shopping for homes in the middle of the winter are usually very determined and they're shopping for a house for a reason. This is also reflected in their home buying strategy and how they are making offers. So this offers a key advantage for selling a home in the middle of the winter. Thirdly, it may also be beneficial for you from a timing point of view. So if you want to sell first and then buy later, you can time it in a way that you get an accepted offer on your home and as inventory levels are increasing in the marketplace, you are ready to become a buyer on your own. By the way, if you're not sure if you should buy a new house first or if you should sell your old house first or if you should do both things at the same time, watch my video about the five best strategies that you can choose from. I'm going to link it somewhere up here. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you got some interesting information out of it. I would love it if you would subscribe. My name is Marcus Auerbach and I'll see you next week.